Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. This is just another recent finds video. I just want to share a few things that I've picked up over the past few weeks. Um, I did grab some 45s too, but I'm actually going to kind of show those in a separate video. But um, yeah, just a few different albums, um, one or two new releases, a uh, couple things I was introduced to by some VC members, which is always great. And um, yeah, it's always just kind of random. So let's just kind of kind of jump right into it. I think you guys kind of kind of know me by now. Uh, the first one here, which was a reissue, I don't know if it's a reissue or issue for the first time, um, but I was definitely glad that they did. Which is Dinosaur Junior without a sound. This is a two LP set on yellow vinyl, which I don't, again I can't stand the colored vinyl thing, but I'm just happy that they they pressed it. Um, definitely one of my favorite albums by them. You know, I'm really hit and miss with Dinosaur Jr. Like, when I love an album by them, like this one or Bug or something like that, I absolutely love it. When I can't stand an album by them, I can't stand it. <laughs> so, um, again, one of the ones I really like, so I'm, I'm glad they did press this. Like I said, 2LP set on yellow vinyl. And this has my favorite song by them, which is Feel the Pain. That's always been my favorite Dino Dinosaur Jr. song. And I think this came out in, what, what, what 94, 95-ish, somewhere right up in there. And one of the things I've always loved about that song is it's it's almost like the perfect song that represents the bridge between what was going on from the new wave stuff of the 80s to what was going on and coming in in the 90s. I just think some, something about that mixture of that, that three-note groove in the song and just the vocal delivery, it, it just seems like a song that really represents all the great stuff about the 90s and the 80s all together. So, um, yeah, fantastic album, killer track, and definitely glad that they, they reissued that. Next here is uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Greatest Hits. Just nice little 2LP set. And this one still had the poster in it too, which was kind of nice. But, um, yeah, just, I mean, Diana Ross and the Supremes, just, you know, some more... You know, I love my love Motown and all that good stuff. And actually, one of the things I decided to do, in case you guys haven't seen this, there's a documentary that's called, uh, I think it's Hitsville, the creating or the something of Motown, or it's something, something like that. I may mix up a couple words in there. But it's a documentary basically about Motown. And with all of the, the documentaries I've seen in my lifetime, that is arguably the best documentary I have ever seen. Um... I, I was just floored just how engaged I was and how I was so amazed by every single story that was told in there. Um, and it was more or less kind of narrated by Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson, which, of course, gave you even that much more insight on everything. But uh, just a fantastic documentary if you haven't seen it, especially if you love Motown. You have to check that out. But yeah, this is um, Diana Ross and the Supremes. So, another great pickup there. And the next one here, these two I was actually introduced to by our fellow VC member, uh, 33 RPM Vinyl. He did a video about a week or two ago and showed these two albums. I had never heard of them before. And uh, he did some needle drops and I was just like, that is awesome stuff, I gotta go get that. So it is Tess Parks and Antoine Newcomb. And this is a I Declare Nothing. Um, again, I'd never heard of them before and was just floored when I heard I heard him uh, you know, play a couple of clips the other day. So the, the way I kind of describe it to someone else who hasn't heard it before, um, it's kind of like, in my mind, it's kind of Mazzy Star going a little bit more psychedelic, if you will. Um, Again, the, the, that's the feel that, that I kind of get from it. But awesome record, awesome album cover too, I think, which is kind of nice. But yeah, great, great stuff. And again, man, I, I appreciate it. I think I left you a message actually saying that I was thanking you for introducing me to that and I was going to go out and try to find it right away. And then here you have, I believe it's a self-titled same artist there. And again, kind of the exact same feel too. 
So a great introduction to a new artist for me. And again, just like watching so many videos in the VC, I discover so much music from you guys, and I appreciate it. Uh, another one that was kind of, I was introduced to by one of my good friends here at a local record store. Uh, he was spending this one day and kind of told me a little bit about Fontella Bass. This is the album Free. I think it's from 1972. Just kind of some old school soul again. I believe she was kind of a local in the St. Louis area. Um, and had, you know, had played with some different bands and that type of thing. But yeah, just kind of eardropped it a little bit. And there was just, again, kind of some, some great unique soul stuff on there. and really liked it and thought I would check it out. So that's Fontella Bass Free. Next here, we have a Japanese pressing, which is the Motels. And this is all for one. Uh, of course, this album has their, their big hit on there, which is Only the Lonely. Um, I actually didn't realize I didn't have a copy of this album. Uh, I bought a 45 a few weeks ago, like, you know, a little 99 cent 45, and Only the Lonely was the A side, and the B side was changes or something like that but it was basically a song where she was just kind of singing like an old a very old vocal jazz type of thing you know it wasn't 80s anything and i just remember listening to that thinking like wow her her voice is like a lot more amazing than you realize because you kind of lump them into the whole just you know 80s pop new wave category and so that made me kind of think i need to go out and get this album and um yeah, I mean, just great stuff as always. I have a few of their other albums, but for whatever reason, just did not have this one, which again, has their probably their biggest hit, which is Only the Lonely. But there's also another interesting song on here, which is called uh, He Hit Me. Uh, and it felt like something, I forgot the end of it, and the, Obi's kind of actually covering up the end of the title there, but the song's called He Hit Me, which I thought was kind of strange, because I was just sitting there listening to the album, you know, just kind of checking it out, and... All of a sudden you hear her singing about how basically she's discovered that this guy really, really likes her because he started hitting her, <laughs> you know, just really kind of, kind of darkish, if you will. But, um, yeah, great album, you know, definitely one that I think 80s, every 80s fan should have. And I do believe that this is the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is either the, the Japanese or UK cover or something like that, because I think the American release actually had this on the cover with a black outline. So that's kind of the, a different cover there, but nice shot of her, really cool band. Then you have the Strange Names, and this is Data, and another kind of strange band. Um, Definitely some good stuff, though. I mean, again, it's, it's always kind of hard to describe bands sometimes, especially if we don't have, like, the editing stuff to do, needle drops and everything. But the way I describe this band is that they kind of, they vocally, not musically, vocally, they kind of sound like M83, but with less dream popish, you know, type of floating feel, but more almost trying to be, like, early 80s R&B type of vocal. Um... And then the music's kind of the same way. It's kind of electronic, you know, beats and things like that, but not up-tempo dance type of stuff, but more old, old school, or, but like 80s R&B-ish type of feel. I don't know, again, really hard to describe, but, uh, you know, check out a couple of tracks and see what you think. Um, I would say... Actually, like the first three tracks, UFO, People to Go, and Keep Walking Away were all kind of interesting. Burning Out was kind of an interesting track, too. So, yeah, if you never heard of them, check them out. You probably just either completely hate it or kind of find something neat in it. Probably, probably not much in between, though. <laughs> Best of Marisi. Pretty self-explanatory there. Really cool 2LP set. Of course, this has my favorite song by him, which is Every Day is Like Sunday. And a lot of his other great stuff too, so nice two LP set there. And then the last two, little addition to the, I guess kind of old school hip hop. I mean, this is definitely 90s. Um, E40 in a major way. 
And my favorite album by E-40 was his debut, which was The Mailman. I, I so wish they would put that on vinyl. That that album is the... Mm. But uh, this is definitely a good one, too. I think this is his follow-up to that uh, in a major way. You know, definitely some, some great tracks on here. You have stuff like, you know, The, uh, the Bubble, One Love, um, FedEx, and you know, Dusted and Disgusted. That's an, another track he did on here, which actually he did with Tupac. But um, kind of his claim to fame, E-40, was like in his rapping style, was how fast that, that he, he, he could rap. But not only was he fast, but the way that he could so precisely enunciate every word while he was rapping that fast. So it's like you don't get lost in what he's saying because you hear everything he's saying crystal clear. He's just saying it so freaking fast. But uh, again, like I said, if you want to check out a couple songs off of this, I would suggest Dusted and Disgusted, One Love, uh, FedEx, and, uh, and The Bubble. The Bumble, I'm sorry. If you really want to see what E-40 can do, I recommend going to the album The Mailman and checking out songs like uh, uh, Bring the Yellow Tape, probably my favorite song off of that. Where the party at? Um, yeah, I mean that that whole whole album is is awesome. I just so wish they press it on vinyl. But moving right along, the very last one here. You guys know I've been working on a lot of Uriah Heap stuff and still trying to pull that in. And this is Uriah Heap live. Another fantastic live album here. Uh, nice to find this one too. I think I found it for like five dollars or six dollars or something like that. Um, but you know, you, you tend to see these everywhere. It's just, you rarely see them without a ton of ring wear all over this black cover. So I was really excited when I actually found a, a pretty clean copy, which was, which was nice. So, so anyway, there you go, VC. Like I said, this was kind of short and sweet, just a few recent finds. Um, as always, let me know what you think and we will talk to you guys soon. All right, take care guys.